This video will contain boss spoilers to show the build off. Use the timestamps to skip major spoiler parts. Okay? Spoilers right after this. Three, two, one. Are you guys ready to be OP in Lords of the Fallen? Well, you came to the right place. I'm Boar and welcome to my first build, Skywalker. A holy build meant to slay the darkness. Not only is this build very strong, where I beat most bosses in one or two tries, but it's also the easiest to make because it's literally just using the first major boss's weapon, so the only searching you'd have to do are for the accessories and a couple spells. But keep in mind, the footage you see is me using my story build. It is not as min-max as what I'm going to show you, so the power is going to be even better for you. Before we begin, though, if you want to know my thoughts on Lord of the Rings, I, I mean, Lords of the Fallen, you can check out my review, and you'll see more footage of this build, too. But slap, slap like, like on the video, now. join the channel if you want to support the channel, thanks to the members, and let's begin. For the beginning class, you want the Cleric, best in slot. However, Dark Crusader is also great, and you're going to probably have a better start just due to its weapon being pretty strong. But Pieta's sword requires 25 radiance. It is gotten from beating Pita and getting her remembrance, the first real boss you face. It is a purely holy damage weapon, no physical damage. It has 100 in the smite status, which strikes the enemy with a lightning bolt when you build up enough of it. It is a short sword, so attack speed is blazing fast, meaning DPS is high and it leaves you with ample time to dodge if you need. Yet, it has like great sword s range, meaning it's great at clearing mobs despite being super fast. However, it costs 40 scours. Now, scours are obtained from beating bosses, notably sucking those soul memories after beating them, or sucking memories you find in areas. Sucking. But the reality is you won't get Pieta's sword till after Congregator of Flesh, or even the first beacon boss. And if you're wondering, boss weapons can only go up to plus five. But all that means in Cleric's case is it kind of leaves you in an awkward position. With only 10 strength and eight agility, you can't wield pretty much anything you find. So for now, you have two choices. Either stick with the hammer all the way through, or waste two points into strength or agility to wield a better weapon. My recommendation is the latter and using the Hollowed Condemnation Sword. It's a bleed sword. You find this in the chest in the beginning village area at the start of the game, so very early to obtain, and then just upgrade it to plus three or four once you find a blacksmith to have a smoother time till you get Pieta's sword. Make sure to use your range holy spell to do some damage from afar or pick off ranged enemies too. So that is your early game plan. However, what makes a Radiance build strong is the spells. Radiant spells often linger, so the enemy is taking damage not only from your melee attacks, but from your persistent spells at the same time, racking up total damage. Not only that, but most spells can stack with the same cast. So even though a lightning spell is rather slow, right? You can just spam a bunch of them and have a thunderstorm over the whole field, or raining down on one enemy. Which by the way, this spell auto locks on and will move to the next target after it kills something. So I'd argue this is one of the top tier builds in the game, if not the best, with range, AOE, fast attack speed, and healing over time. It's got everything. So first major spell is Aureus' Judgment. This is your main DPS spell you want to use to clear packs or ranged enemies and against bosses, spamming it at the start of the fight and then entering melee when the enemy gets close. Unfortunately, I don't know where I found it at and the wiki doesn't say where it's at yet, but it is mid to late game so by the time you get it, those sources should be available to you. The next major spell is the Radiant Weapon. This is bought from Dunmire at Skyrest Bridge right after beating Pieta, so very early. This buffs your weapon with holy damage and adds smite status. What's cool is that even though Pieta's sword has an element, you can add a buff element on top, so they stack. And you can see the damage differences here to prove that. The negative is that you can't really see if the buff runs out since the sword's already glowing, but the damage boost is significant, so you want it on all the time. Thirdly is the healing over time, invigorating aura spell. This constantly drains your mana, but also heals you considerably over time, and you can also stack this with healing brimstones and even healing rings. But if you are full HP, you can turn it off by unequipping it and then equipping it back. 
as otherwise it's just gonna drain all your mana for no reason. But like Judgment, I don't know where this thing's at, you'll have to see the pinned comment for locations, which won't be updated till the wiki is updated, so we're at the mercy of time here. But that's basically it, those are your three core spells. Until you get Judgment though, you want to use key clones that you buy from the Umber guy like Pieta's Sword, as they deal pretty good damage, and they track. However, with these you can't spam them, so it's not as strong as Judgment later on, but early on, definitely want to use this in its place. However, thanks to my catalyst, you will get 5 slots. So you can add the clones and then the 5th will be your choice. The one spell I couldn't find was Lucent Beam, aka... Beam. Again, the wiki sucks early on, but based off an all magic video I saw, it looks very strong. So that'll likely be the best in slot 5th spell, Kamehameha. For our catalyst, we use Abyss Chalice. It gets A plus scaling at max and beats out most of the other catalysts I tested it, while also giving you 5 slots over the usual 3. You will have to farm this though, so if you don't get it early in the Abbey Mountain, then the Empyrean checkpoint is the best farm. Run right outside the building and you'll see one of those waifu casters. If you attack fast, they should die in 2-3 hits. There is a second one up top the stairs, however an annoying shield lady aggros and is annoying course, Karen. So the quickest farm is to kill the first one and then run back to the spawn and refresh and repeat. You can use cat paws for more item discovery, but this took me like a half hour to get though, so good luck. Till you reach this point though, use any other catalyst as a stopgap. Even the beginning one for cleric is fine, just don't waste a chunk on it, only upgrade it to like plus 7 or 8 max. Now there is an S scaling catalyst, however I never got it so I don't know where it's at or how much power it'll compare to this one. But for the rest of the gear, shield, again, bad base stats for cleric means you can't equip much. But having a light shield means you can get slightly easier parries than heavier shields. Well shield wise, I mean it's up to you, doesn't really matter, it's not really a part of the build. Amulet, big one. I haven't used this for my entire playthrough, but when I tested it out for this video, it is ridiculous. Hollow Triptych gives your holy damage, all of it, your sword, your spells, posture damage. This means you can do criticals without even having to do charge attacks or parries. I couldn't test this against any bosses because I beat them all, but if it knocks their posture down easily like this, then this probably makes this the best build in the game. Now spell wise, it won't knock them out, it'll get them to zero, but you still have to do like a charge heavy attack or do a kick via L1 plus R1 to actually trigger the critical. But like the other junk, I don't know where it's at, so check the pinned comment for locations. But for rings, I chose the Holy Ring for more holy damage. It's not a big increase, but might as well. You can buy this from Captain Stoman after he disappears from Skyrus Bridge, and you later find him just before entering the Abbey Mountain in this location here. And the second ring is a toss-up. I have none of the good rings, nor do I know the locations. But these are the ones I think will be best for the second slot. You got two handed damage boost or minus one spell for more spell power. Mana regen is always solid and may counter invigorating aura drain, which you can also counter using mana crystals too, by the way. For armor, it is up to you. Fashion souls or equip the heaviest junk you got while staying in medium for the most defenses. And lastly, stats. I beat the game at level 82, but for now I'm level 90. So here is the stat progression. Since Pieta Sword is a bit of ways, again, if you start a Cleric, I would suggest 10 Agility for that one sword. Otherwise, start pumping health first to around 15, and then start getting your Radiance to 25 to meet the sword's requirements. And depending on where you're at, you can continue pumping Radiance to 30 for the clone spell, or get Vitality to 20. After that, start raising Endurance a bit, and you'll start gradually increasing all three of these stats as you level. Soft cap for damage is 75, however, I recommend stopping at 74, since level 75 only gave like 2 points to the sword. 40 is about the limit you want for HP, and from there, put more into Endurance for more stamina, unless you want to use a heavy shield, in which case you meet the requirements for that instead. Final tip is the gameplay. You're going to start off with buffing your sword. You can also use Invigorating Aura at this point as well. Then you would enter the boss room and start spamming Judgment until the boss got close, and then you will go into melee mode and just R1 spam. Pairing, dodging, and with the amulet, hopefully by then, the boss's posture will be ready to be broken. And then I mean, yeah, easy clap, GG's, lol. So yeah, that is my Skywalker build. Use the force, Luke. If there's something more powerful than this, then I don't know. The game's probably not balanced. <laughs> 
But yeah, sorry about the location stuff, but hopefully those will be known soon. Check the pinned comment for any update on the spells and amulets. But hope you have fun with the build and comment down below. How are you guys enjoying Lords of the Fallen so far for those that got it? Obviously, the game ended up being a bit of a stinker with performance and multiplayer issues. And I told you guys, I told you the game needed a delay. But no, it doesn't need to be delayed. But whatever, there's a lot of people complaining on Reddit and other places. And even PC got a new patch that also messed up my performance again. So yay. Uh, next build. I don't know. We'll see. If this video gets a thousand likes, I'll push through the game to make another one. Either an Infernal build or Bleed. So hit the like button, dang it. Until then, XP farm videos soon and Giga Tips later. So don't miss out by subscribing for more Lords of the Bad Performance Epicness.